Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are very excited to chat about today's topic. But before we get started, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we are the Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today's topic is about executive functioning, and we are gonna give you seven activities for executive functioning. I have a lot to say on the topic. I know you do. <laughs> For our kiddos especially, executive functioning is a huge part of their day, especially when they are in school. We do have a podcast episode on executive functioning, and we go into all of the details about what exactly it is, why it's important, everything you need to know about executive functioning, and we're not going to go into all of the details here today. We are going to tell you some of the main components of executive functioning so that it's a little bit easier to understand why we're talking about it. The first component of executive functioning is inhibition or impulse control. So being able to control that impulse to poke your friend next to you, for an example. Another component is called shift, and this is your ability to shift your attention from one task to the next. Another one is emotional control, so being able to control those emotions inside of your body and your brain and have those appropriate responses to big problems and little problems. The next component is initiation, and this is the ability to start an activity or start a task and know what the first step is. The next one is working memory, being able to have an idea in your head, hold on to it and recall it when necessary. Next is planning and organization, and this is the ability to plan out what needs to be done as well as to organize the plan, but also organize whatever materials are necessary and then be able to put it all together. So does your child know which folder they need to take home on a certain day? Do they bring home the right materials for the homework required? So being able to organize the materials in an appropriate manner. And the last one is self-monitoring. And this is the ability to identify how you're doing and do you need to change how you're doing it, what you're doing, just being, being able to monitor yourself and adjust. So we do want to talk a little bit about some functional challenges that you might see if your child struggles with executive functioning. The first being poor impulse control. This is very common in our kiddos who cannot, you know, stop from doing a certain activity. They are all over the place and they just really cannot control those impulses that come to their brain immediately. Another one is going to be challenges with attention, and this includes attention to preferred activities. So a child who struggles with executive functioning is not only going to struggle with attention to non-preferred tasks, but also preferred activities. Another one is rigid thinking patterns. So they might struggle with that flexible thinking of being able to go with the flow during these activities of having a substitute during the day at school, or dad picks them up from school instead of mom who usually does it. So having that ability to be flexible in their thinking throughout the day is a huge component of executive functioning. And going along with that, children might struggle with outbursts over what we would say nothing, right? So having a big reaction to a small problem. So a child who struggles with rigid thinking might also have big reactions to those small problems when something changes. Another one is they could struggle with identifying their emotions. Maybe they're frustrated about something, but they can't put a label on their, the fact that they're feeling frustrated and this is why. These kiddos also struggle with being able to start those activities. And this specifically looks like maybe in the classroom, the teacher gives them an assignment and the child hears the instructions, knows where things are, but they just can't get started. They don't have that initiation to get started even when they know what to do. Mm -hmm. Going along with that, a child might struggle with completing a task and following those instructions. So whether they're written instructions, they're verbal instructions, being able to follow them from start to finish is a sign that maybe that executive functioning challenge is there. 
And then we're talking about memory as well. So the child might not remember the steps to a certain task. This can be remembering instructions that were given a couple of minutes ago, or even remembering something that they do every single day, like remembering the steps to brush their teeth. They do it every day, but they still struggle to remember all of the steps they need to do. Another one is maybe struggling with organizing those daily life tasks. So things like, you know, what is the first step of their morning routine? Do they brush their teeth first or do they have breakfast first? Maybe they're struggling to pack their backpack before they leave for the day and they have, you know, folders and shoes and socks hanging out of their backpack and they're just really struggling with just basic organization skills required for those successful daily tasks. Yeah, these kids are just gonna have very messy areas. Their room might be really messy, their closet might be really messy, their desk or their locker at school is gonna be very messy and they just can't find what they need. They might also struggle with turning their homework in on time, losing their homework, knowing what homework to do. They're probably smart kiddos and they know this, but they cannot organize and keep track of the things that need to be done. These kiddos who struggle with executive functioning are also going to have trouble planning ahead for events or tasks. So maybe they know that they have a piano lesson on Wednesday, but they forget. And even though it happens every single week, maybe it's written down on the calendar, they still can't plan for it and prepare for it. They're gonna be forgetful and forget that they have these things coming up. Maybe they struggle to complete these tasks in a timely manner. So they know that they have a due date to get this book report done. They procrastinate, they wait to the last minute, they turn their homework in late. They can't get things done in a timely manner. Maybe they're distracted or maybe they struggle with that impulse control like we've mentioned. All of the factors could be connected, but definitely something to look for if a child struggles with that executive functioning. And then finally, being able to identify how they're doing and how they can adjust and going into, you know, looking at the school setting, if they're able to say, yep, I know exactly what I'm doing. I know how well I'm doing compared to my peers or compared to last time I do it. These kiddos can't do that. They have no idea how they're doing or how to adjust to do maybe a little bit better. Okay, wow, that was a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, but it's all connected to. It is. So if you're thinking, wow, my child, check, 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 check. They check off all of these boxes. Maybe you're thinking, what do I do now? How can I help them improve their executive functioning skills? Well, that's why we're here. <laughs> we're gonna give we're you here. all the tips to help improve their executive functioning skills. Here are our seven favorite strategies and activities to help with executive functioning. Number one is visual schedules. We love visual schedules in all shapes and forms. It can be a written list, it can be a picture list, whatever works for your child. Use that visual schedule to help with attention, organization, planning, initiation, and just identify exactly what your child struggles with. So if they're struggling with their morning routine, create a visual schedule for their morning routine. We do have a podcast episode on visual schedules, so we'll link that in the description. Make sure you check it out. Number two, we are going to incorporate metronome activities. We love anything working on multiple senses at once, and that is the beauty of a metronome. So it can work on that impulse control, the attention, being able to shift, and as well as the sensory processing aspects. Number three is gonna be using interactive songs. This is great for younger kiddos. Typically some of those older kiddos might be might not be as much into it, but any song that gets your body moving, has that repetition, is really great to work on that attention and that memory component. Plus it's multi-sensory if you can get the movement components in, which always helps with executive functioning. Another one we love is playing 20 Questions or I Spy. I'm sure you all are familiar with these games. We grew up playing these games. And uh, 20 Questions is a great way to work on those attention challenges, being able to monitor their own ability to 
you know, did I already ask this question? What was the answer to this question? And should I ask an appropriate follow-up question as well as I spy? So you can really think about what's going on in the environment, pick up on those small details, which can help the organization skills that these children might struggle with. Number five is going to be learn how to play a musical instrument. And the reason we love this is because it takes all of those executive functioning skills to be successful with it. Mm -hmm. And if your child struggles with executive functioning, maybe start simple and maybe just do like some drums and just start creating different rhythmic patterns with those drums. And then they can work up to more challenging musical instruments if they want. But this is great for working memory, attention to detail, all of the components of executive functioning. Number six is to set up an obstacle course. We love obstacle courses and in the clinic setting, since we are both occupational therapy assistants, we would love having the kiddos set up their own obstacle course. Now this takes an immense amount of planning and organizing and sequencing and envisioning impulse control, just about every component required for executive functioning skills. And for these kids who struggle, this activity was really hard and it took a long time. So if you think about everything that goes into setting up just a simple three-step obstacle course, if these kiddos are struggling just to set that up, what's it going to look like in the school setting as well for these kiddos? You know, are they going to be able to turn their homework in on time? Are they going to be able to grab the materials required for a science project? Chances are it's going to be challenging. So setting up an obstacle course is a great way to build it into play. And these kiddos might not recognize that they're actually working on something that's challenging because it's Play. And that I was, is their occupation. I was going to mention that obstacle courses are super motivating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Number seven is to use the zones of regulation. This is one of our favorite tools to teach emotions, emotional regulation, emotional intelligence. So we're going to link it in the description, but just a quick overview. The zones of regulation uses a color system to categorize different emotions as well as then learning different strategies. So I, we always like to use the stoplight example of, you know, you've got red, yellow, green, green means go. So when you're in the green zone, you're ready to learn, you're ready to go. But if you're in the red zone, it means you need to stop because maybe you're out of control. So it's a great way to teach self monitoring and that emotional intelligence piece. Surprise! We do have a couple of podcast episodes on this topic as well. We do have an episode with the founder, Leah, and then we also have an episode that talks about our five favorite tools for regulation. And the zones is definitely talked about in that episode because it is one of our favorites. So we'll link those in the description below as well. Hopefully you learned something amazing from this video. Hopefully you can take a couple of these strategies and incorporate them to help your child if they're struggling in any of those areas of executive functioning. Yeah. We recommend starting with one thing. If you are feeling overwhelmed, maybe you have your own <laughs> executive functioning challenges. I know I struggle in certain areas as well. We all do. But just start with one a visual schedule. Try implementing that, see how it helps, and then you can build on your toolbox tools for helping them thrive in as many different settings as possible. Make sure you check out all the resources down in the description so that you can learn more, get more ideas, and just have a great time with it. Make sure that you are following our Instagram accounts at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. And we've mentioned it a couple times, but we do have that podcast, All Things Sensory, and we're on all the different podcast platforms. You can find us pretty much everywhere. Yeah. We do have an amazing blog over at harfla.co, so make sure you check that out as well if you're into reading things and getting your information that way. We like to be as inclusive as possible and have the information in all of these different media formats for you, so definitely check it out. One final note, if you are really concerned about your child's ability to get through their day successfully, we recommend talking to your pediatrician and getting an OT referral because that in-person therapy is really the best route to go. All right, if you have questions, you can leave them in the comment section below and we will get to those and we will plan on seeing you next week.
them. So. Okay, so. <laughs> yep, so. Okay, so. 